The integral of this video is almost the same as the integral of the previous video. Almost. Only a minus sign is different. That shouldn't be too much of a problem, right? Well, this minus sign is annoying. It means that we now have a singularity on our axis of integration. We are still able to do this one, but we need to be very careful. Let's take a look into this in this video. So this minus sign is over there. I want to integrate from zero to infinity, so at x equals one now we do have a problem. So first step is obvious, you just take the same uh, of a, a similar f z to the power alpha minus one over one minus z now, and define z to the power alpha minus one um, uh, as usual. But now we really have to think about the argument of z and our outer contour a bit more carefully. So how are you going to solve that? You uh, problem is at, at one, at, you, you want to integrate from zero to infinity, that's the integral you want to obtain, but at one you have this problem, so you have to go around it with this c epsilon. So how do we form our contour? Uh, we, uh, we start with L11 to go from uh, rho to uh, one minus epsilon, so say from zero to one in the limit later on. Then we have our L12 goes from one plus epsilon up to r, and then we cut out the c epsilon, a small circle. Then we go around. Uh, we go back. Yeah, how, how are we going, going to go back? You cannot go back the entire way, uh, entirely around. You have to close using L2 and just hope for the best in the end. If you go around, you encounter your singularity at one again. So you cannot do that. So just use L2, uh, which will give us another integral. And let's just hope it doesn't mess up the results too much. So that's the plan. Uh, so our total contour consists of a C rho, L11, C epsilon, L12, CR, and an L2. Well, uh, the, uh, uh, just on the, in the, the good side, we did the C rho and CR, and in previous video, those integrals will vanish in the limit. But we still have a couple of other problems. Um, first of all, we can use cauchy gorsar or theorem of residues. No singularities inside our contour, so integral along c total is zero. So that's easy. But what about z equals one? So it's a singularity on the axis, and we are going around it with a semicircle. However, it's a pole of order one, and we have a theorem of, uh, about that. If f of z has a pole of order one on the axis, or the uh, is the ratio of b1 over here, so this phi of z is analytic, simple pole. Then the limit epsilon to zero, this integral along the semicircle equals minus pi i times b1. Only holds for a simple pole, but fortunately here we do have a simple pole. So that's how we are able to calculate the integral along uh, c epsilon, and that's going to give us a contribution. So let us uh, compute this contribution. You can uh, write your uh, f of z as uh, minus 1 over z minus 1 times g of z, which is z to the power alpha minus 1. Now your uh, g can be uh, expanded like this. And then you see that you can write your f of z as minus g of 1 over z minus 1 plus something which is analytic. So then we are happy. We have our b1 equals minus 1. And we have our integral uh, over this c epsilon that's equal to pi i namely minus pi i times minus one equals pi i. So that's the part of the theorem of residues and how we deal with our point x equals one. Now going to step three, uh, computing along L1, one, L1, two, and L2. So what do we have along L1, one, and L1, two? Well, that's actually pretty easy. Uh, your uh, argument is just zero, so you can parameterize z equals psi e to the power i zero, so the z to the power alpha minus one is no problem, just becomes psi to the power alpha minus one. So the integral along L11, then you integrate from rho to one minus epsilon, just the function you want to get in the end. And along L12, you go from one plus epsilon to r, just the function you want to get. So that's, uh, that's actually the integral you want to obtain in the end. Along L2, yeah, that is a bit annoying because Along L2, we have to parameterize that equals psi to the power e pi i. Argument is pi over there. Remember how we took our branch cut. 
So you set to the power alpha minus one gets you an additional factor pi i here. Okay, that's fine. So you get a minus set to the power alpha minus one from the minus pi i and e to the power pi i alpha. Uh, however, if you plug it in, you integral along L2, okay, you go from R to rho, also no problem. But your uh, 1 over 1 minus z, that becomes a 1 over 1 plus psi. So that becomes a different integral. So this part on the numerator is fine, but you get a 1 over 1 plus psi, d minus psi. Uh, so just uh, uh, use the minus sign and the d minus sign to change the boundaries r and rho, and just put the minus e to the power pi i alpha in front, then we are over there. But note that we now got a different integral as well, uh, compared to the ones over here. So this spells, in principle, this spells danger. Let's see whether we survive. Uh, moving on to c rho and c r, you can just take exactly the same estimates as in the previous video, won't go to, into that, those, lim those are just zero in the limit. Then wrap everything up. L11, C epsilon, L12, CR, L2, zero. Some of those integrals equals zero. Um, the, uh, then what we want to keep, we put it on the left hand side. So that's this one here and this one there. Uh, then the this integral goes here. The ones who are going to cancel out, we just put them there and there. And here you have your C epsilon, which gives you a contribution later on. So taking limits, oh, let's uh, 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 let's make some room. Taking limits epsilon to zero, rho to zero, and r to infinity. Uh, these integrals are going to cancel out, and you get uh, uh, the integral principal value of the integral from zero to infinity, what you want, a principal value because you go from one minus epsilon and a one plus epsilon, take this epsilon at the same base to zero. And uh, what you're left with is your C epsilon integral, which gave you a minus pi i, and another integral, the one over L2. So that's annoying. Now you have the integral you want is another integral minus pi i. How do we get rid of this other integral? Hey, but that's fortunate. In the previous video, we exactly did this integral. It's equal to pi over sine pi alpha. So we can use the result of the previous video to compute the integral of this video. Just plug pi over sine pi alpha in over here. Then the integral you want equals pi over sine pi alpha times e to the power i pi alpha minus pi i. But uh, uh, e to the power pi i alpha is cosine pi alpha plus i times the sine of pi alpha. So this imaginary part of this part gives you a i times sine pi alpha times pi divided by sine pi alpha is i pi cancels with the minus i pi here. So you're only left with the, left with the uh, cosine pi alpha times pi divided by sine pi alpha. And that's exactly the value of the principal value of the integral we were looking for.